<laughs> you know, you look a lot like your great-grandfather. He was quite a man. You just don't find those old country doctors anymore. <laughs> Mr. Munster, I will come straight to the point. I have brought with me something that I think you would like to have a look at. But you must be careful not to mention it for reasons that will become obvious. Oh, dear, I hope it's something my wife wouldn't mind me looking at. <laughs> Mr. Munster, prepare yourself. Mr. Munster, meet Johan. Gee, Doc, is it safe? Oh, yes. I have him absolutely under my thumb. Back into the closet. Back, 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 back. <gasps> well, what do you think of Johan? Well, he's quite handsome. But he certainly isn't much on small talk. <laughs> I suppose you're wondering how I ran into him. Well, I am slightly puzzled. I mean, faces like mine don't grow on trees. <laughs> Please sit down. Oh, thank you. Before my grandfather perfected you, if you'll pardon the expression, he had one or two near misses. <laughs> yes, Johan is one of the rejects. He was discovered, uh, oh, about six months ago, living in the woods on the old ancestral Frankenstein estate in Germany. He had managed to survive since 1815. Oh, he was terribly uncivilized. Running about the countryside, frightening young maidens and terrifying the populace. Well, I did a little of that myself before I got married. <laughs> yes, but, you know, Mr. Munster, you have been polished by civilization. But I'm afraid our friend Johan needs some of the rough edges knocked off him. Oh, I get it. You want me to go in the closet and work him over? <laughs> no, no. I want you to take him home and expose him to some of the refinements and niceties of life that you have achieved. But I would like to keep the experiment quiet. For instance, I wish you wouldn't blab about it in front of your wife. I won't say a thing. I'll stick the old boy down the dungeon and slop some of my charm on him and see. <laughs> Johan? Johan? You will come out now. You will behave yourself. And you will go with this nice man. <laughs> What happened to him? I sometimes use a little mental telepathy, a sort of mild hypnosis. But you must watch it. It won't last. Oh, we'll get along fine. <laughs> Come along, Johan. We're going bye-bye. <laughs> Hermit, you better calm him down before I bang him on the nose and spoil his good looks. <laughs> Johan, you will calm down. You will calm down. You will now behave. <laughs> we will now continue with our reading lesson. <laughs> look, look, look. See John run. Look and see John run. Run, run, run. Now you try it. <laughs> Very good. You see, he's pronouncing his consonants much better now. Yeah, well, he ain't exactly ready for the Harvard debating team. <laughs> he's taking the civilization very nicely. And I think my jacket on him gives him a certain savoir faire. <laughs> it's right off the rack in the Salvation Army. <laughs> oh, golly. It's five after one. <laughs> I promised Dr. Frankenstein I'd drop over and give him a report on Johan. Uh, will you carry on while I get back, Grandpa? Okay, Herman. Now, <laughs> Johan, uh, we shall uh, continue the lesson. <laughs> I want to know what you've been doing down in that dungeon the past few days. And what were those grunts and groans? <coughs> what, what I've been doing down the dungeon? Uh, <coughs> I've had a sore throat. <laughs> and Grandpa fixed me up some cough syrup. Yeah, that's right. He fixed me up some cough syrup, and I've been gargling. <laughs> 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 